Okay, folks, welcome back to another Budget Gem or Budget Bust. Today, I have got a Rockville amp for us in for an, an unboxing and a amp dyno. Uh, you know, if a couple of you might remember, I did the Rockville DB16 uh, back before the new year. Um, uh, you know, I had that in my old setup with the AMM1, and it did did pretty good in my opinion for 214 bucks I think I got just under 1800 watts uncertified on that one and well over 2000 watts dynamic um, so that app in terms of its CEA rating was a little um, optimistic it, you know it didn't do the 2000 watts that it had said um, so anyway I haven't had a chance to test another Rockville amp since then uh, but recently, um, you know, I like to follow what's going on there, especially in the budget, especially in the budget arena. And Rockville was out there, and they're promoting their DB series of amps. And uh, someone had asked them in one of their threads on Facebook, "Hey, you know, we should see an amp dyno of one of these." And they said, "Sure." And so I, of course, trolling the post, just put up quickly, "Well." My dyno is always available, and lo and behold, they contacted me almost immediately, and they sent me both this DB14 and a DB45, and uh, they said, you know what, try them out in the dyno, and then give them away. That's so I was like, awesome. So some of you are going to have uh, the ab ability of entering and doing a giveaway on this, but that's for later for now we're gonna unbox this amp and then we're gonna after we're done doing that and walking around it we are gonna strap this up to the trusty amp dyno and find out just how much power this DB14 actually has inside it so let's just get right to it and let's unbox this bad boy okay opening her up first thing we get in here we have an owner's manual and we have a burst sheet. Um, now, just like in the 16s, I, I, I question these burst sheets. Uh, I know some people asked, well, how could I question them? Well, and this, this right here is what gets me. Everything else is printed nicely on here. The, the RMS specs, both four ohms and two ohms. And then for the serial number, they slap it on with a sticker. So if this is exactly what this amp does, and you've typed that into the computer, why did you have to put the sticker right there for the serial number? So I had actually, I reached out to Rockville and I said, hey, are these batch number tested? In other words, they produce like 100 amps, they pull one from the line, they bench test that one, and then they count that as the burst sheet, or is it everyone tested? and?" They didn't get back to me. Um, I, I don't know, but we'll find out if this number is, these two numbers here are exact or not. Um, of course, they're at 1% THD, so that'll be the certified test. Uh, let's see, let's open up this packet here so we can check out the owner's manual. Um, that's here. So let's see if we can get to some old specifications on power. This is a big manual here. Of course, there's a lot of DB series amps, so this is a one-size-fits-all manual. Uh, all right, here we go. And of course, these are CEA rated. So there's the DB14 right here. And uh, yeah, so let's just start with the ratings on this amp. And uh, you know, I'm going to take a picture of this, and it'll show up on the screen just about now. So these amps are—they've got three different ratings for the power and you know I talked about this back on the 16 video and I don't really I'm not a fan of the three ratings because inevitably two of the numbers are full of poop um, I mean I get for, I get it from a marketing standpoint you know why they're doing it you know they're trying to appeal to the different knowledge levels of people so you have the peak rating which this one peak is rated at uh, 2400 watts by one at one ohm um, or 1200 watts or I'm sorry uh, 4000 watts by one at two ohms 
Uh, that's the peak number. That's the that's if you, as they put it, if you believe in the boss numbers, that's boss numbers. Then they have the RMS numbers, um, which they had equated like if you're looking at like a sound stream or one of those, you know, kind of you know, budget level amps. Um, then the number is 1,200 and 2,000, which, you know, they say, well, it's double what the CEA number. The CEA number, that's the real RMS number. And on this particular amp, it is 600 watts at 4 ohms and 1,000 watts at 2 ohms. Um, that's all at 1% THD. Now, again, I'm not a fan of that, that RMS number being the fake number because oftentimes I've had to correct a lot of people on like the Facebook groups and all this other stuff other than saying I bought the 2000 watt Rockville and you're like well which which one they say the 14 it's like, well the 14 is the thousand watt one because the CEA number is what you want so and again I know they say well it's Soundstream Soundstream is pretty close to accurate numbers on their RMS numbers they're optimistic but they're not they're not half power acoustic is half if not less than half. Um, so anyway, that's that's me on my soapbox. Uh, it does require a hundred amp uh, fuse, and uh, yeah, so that's it there. You have your warranty card, etc. What else we got in the box? Oh, we got some Allen keys and some screws. Fantastic. And we have. Ooh, we have our remote base knob and remote base cable, and yes, it is metal, which is pretty nice. I mean, this is this is an amp for $129 shipped, and unless you're in New York, that's also tax-free, assuming you buy it from audiosavings.com or Rockville, which audio, audio savings and Rockville are the same company. This is really the house brand for audio savings. So, not that there's anything wrong with that. And last but not least, one amplifier. And this is a nice looking amp. Of course, this is an LED logo here. So this will all light up blue, just like it did on the 16 series. It's got that nice aluminum anodized and black look to it here. There's no flashy 4,000 watts or any other bull poopy on here so that's that's nice to see um let's check out the sides of the amp along this side of the amplifier we find our power and ground input uh, terminals as well as our speaker output terminals uh, working our way over here you can see these are four gauge power and grounds this reducer fits in absolutely no issue at all which is good that's about what you want for a thousand watt amplifier we have two beefy 50 amp maxi fuses right here in the middle. Um, again, that's about right for 1,000 watt amps. And right here we have two sets of a summed mono um, speaker outputs. And these are a little tiny. I would have preferred these be 8 gauge, but they are 10 gauge, which is still enough. That is more than enough uh, to do 1,000 watts at 2 ohms. And along this side of the amplifier, we have our RCA inputs and outputs, all of our settings, and our ability to strap. So, of course, here are your RCA outputs, which is nice to have included in a $129 amp. I didn't really skip about the features. Uh, your RCA inputs are right here. Of course, you have your gain, your subsonic filter, which is adjustable from 15 hertz to 50 hertz. You have your phase adjustment from 0 to 180 degrees. Uh, if you really want to use bass boost, it's 0 to 12 dBs right there. They call it the bass EQ. You have a low pass filter adjustable from 50 Hz up to 250 Hz. Um, our telephone style remote bass knob connector there. And yes, the amp is strappable. Uh, and you have your single RCA connection between the two amps. And you can adjust from master to slave. So you can strap two of these together. And if you have a need for 2000 watts at 4 ohms, Strap two of these together, four ohm final load, 260 bucks. Pretty sweet. Okay, nothing left to do here but to strap up the Rockville DB14 up to our old trusty amp dyno 
and find out just how much power this amplifier produces. Um, we overrated, are we underrated, are we accurately rated? Let's find out. I, I think no matter what, it's going to hit the 1,000 watts. I don't know if it's going to be certified, but I think it's going to produce 1,000 watts. So let's check this out. I have faith in you, Rockville. Okay, final thoughts here on the Rockville DB14. You just saw the numbers, and yes, this is a budget gem. Now, I know the certified number came in just a tad, little tad, 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 short. Um, again, we got about 980 watts. I think somewhere around there, I'll have to look at the tape, um, which is pretty good. You know, again, this is 129 bucks. Um, so I, I do question the birth sheet. We're just a couple of, a couple of watts um, off of the birth sheet, but uncertified and dynamic, well over 1,100 watts on each. I think we almost touched or did touch 1,200 watts dynamic. Um, so very, very solid job here uh, for the Rockville. And again, this is $129, 129 bucks shipped, including tax if you don't live in New York. That's a good, good value. And it's two ohms. I mean, that's, a, that's the thing. A lot of these thousand watt amps now, you gotta be at one ohm. So it means you're either gonna buy a, a one single DVC two ohm sub, or you gotta buy a pair of dual fours. Here, you could buy a pair of dual two amps, or two, uh, DVC two ohm subs, you get a pair of those, or you can get a single uh, DVC four. So very nice wiring options you get with one of these. Um, it was fairly efficient and it's a nice value. So very nice job Rockville, definitely a budget gem. And the best part about this is we're gonna give away this exact amp. And I am even gonna sign it. So for you guys that are gonna, the person that wins this, you're not gonna be putting it on eBay unless you have to explain what that signature is. So uh, we'll probably announce the details of the giveaway here in the next week or two and it'll probably be part of the DB45 video, and then we're gonna give both of those amps away. So, stay tuned to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and uh, great job, Rockville. I've got more amps to test, including that DB45. I'll see you next time.
Okay, taking a peek at the guts. Um, before I pop in here, let me just say here's one thing that did bug me a little bit on this amp. And this is just me being anal on here. Um, these plastic end caps, this, you know, it was like it was supposed to go over here. Once I pulled off, I can't get the back plate back down flush. So that's just me. There's really nothing, no harm from it. Um, the guts here, yeah, I mean, everything looks, you know, well, well laid out and well designed in here. Um, the caps are, they're nothing fantastic of a brand. They're just called Cap Cop. So I guess these are the police of these large capacitors here. Um, there are 105 degree caps. Um, let's see if I can get a little quick detail in there. Yeah, 2200 uh, ultra farad in there as well. So they're pretty decent caps. Um, yeah, same, same thing there. Is it cap top or cap cop? Either way. Anyway, uh, only thing I do see as an issue in here is these toroids here are not very well seated. You can see I can kind of jiggle these with my finger, um, which when you're thumping away, you know, with a thousand watts RMS in your system, if you've mounted this to your box, it will vibrate it to death. Um, I pointed out, out to, a, to Rockville and they said they were going to get in touch with their build house and get these seated better. Um, so hopefully that's not a problem going forward, but it is something I'd like to see. And again, if you're not mounting this to your box and you're not really vibrating this thing to death, um, or if you're using some type of vibration dampening material, th that's not a big deal, but it's something that, you know, try to make these last a little longer. Uh, and you can also seat this better yourself, just throwing some silicon down along the base of these, and you'll be okay. So, 